Those of you who can remember actually working with vacuum tube electronics once upon a time are probably going to disagree with me, but vacuum tubes are actually some of the hardiest electronic components I've come across. I mean, just take a look at this oscilloscope and this oscillator here. These all have the original tubes in them from the, the 50s and 60s, which I think is just mind blowing. Cause I was always told how fragile and how short of a lifespan they had. And you know, here we are with 50 and 60 year old equipment and it's still working fantastically well. But having said that, they do sometimes go bad and they go bad for different reasons. Sometimes the filament burns out or they get leaky or, you know, even just the glass cracks and they, they no longer function once they lose their vacuum. And so uh, throughout all of the electronic projects that I've been doing and all of the tubes that I have, I've come across I don't know, about eight or 10 bad tubes. And they've gone bad for various reasons. Uh, but I have these bad tubes and I, I just feel bad just throwing them away. And so instead of throwing them away, I thought it would be better to just destroy them. <laughs> but by destroying them, we get to take a look inside. And so that's what I wanna do today. I've got uh, picked out four tubes that I think are gonna be kind of representative of different types of tubes. I'm not really sure uh, what they look like on the inside, but that's what I wanna find out. So I wanna hop over to the bench and take a look at them and then head out to the garage and see if I can cut the glass off of them. I have an idea about how to do that, but I haven't tried it yet. So we'll give that a shot and then hopefully we can uh, take them apart and take a look inside and see just exactly how they're constructed. So let's head over there and get started. So here are the four tubes that I wanna to check today. They're all bad in their own way. From left to right, we have a 1A5 GT. This is a directly heated power pentode. Then we have a 2D21 Thyrotron. Uh, then we have the 6AU6 uh, pentode. This is one of my favorite tubes. And then we have a 1-2-BH-7 dual triode. Now the 1A5GT actually tests bad. You can see it here on my, my vacuum tube tester and I'm pushing the switch and it's, it's not actually doing anything. Uh, so I think the filament may be bad on it, but I'm not entirely sure. All I know is that it, it's no longer good anymore. The 2D21 is the same as well. It also tests bad. Now for reference, this is a good 6AU6, just to show what the tester looks like whenever it's testing a tube that actually functions. And speaking of the 6AU6, the 6AU6 that is bad is bad because a pin fell out of the bottom. This is kind of rare. I haven't had this happen to any other tube. So the insides are probably still fine, but without that pin, the, the tube is essentially useless. And finally, the, the 1-2-BH-7 here, we can tell it's bad pretty much just by looking at the gitter up on the top. We can see that it's pretty much disappeared and it's turned a really light brown color. And if you look closely enough, you'll see why that happened. There's a small little crack in the glass right here, and that allowed oxygen to get inside and contaminate the inside, which the gitter tried to absorb. And so since all four of these tubes are not good anymore, I don't feel bad about trying to take them apart and see what's inside of them. And I'm gonna do it by using our rather large uh, metal lathe. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm setting it to a really low spindle speed. I'm getting it down to about 90 RPM. And I want it to spin slow because I'm actually gonna try and cut this thing by hand while it's spinning. Uh, and anything faster than that is starting to get a little dangerous. So let's start by trying to cut the glass off of the 1A5 GT. And so I'm going to wrap it in a just shop rag so that way I can put the clamps on it without putting uh, too much direct pressure on the actual tube itself and potentially shattering the glass. And once I have it clamped up all tight, it's time to kick it on and take a stab at this. So I'm just using a really small file and I'm holding this file against the glass while it slowly rotates and letting the file just slowly cut a groove into the glass. And sure enough, after a short amount of time, it slices right through the glass and comes off without shattering anything.
All right, well, I'm super happy with how well the glass was able to cut on this tube. I just, I just chucked it in the mill and it filed right on through. That came off such a clean cut, such a nice cut without shattered glass anywhere. So I'm really happy about that. So first things first, before we take the glass off, let's try and figure out what we're expecting on the inside. This is a 1A5 GT, and so the one means that that's the filament voltage. So it's a, a one, one volt filament. I think it's 1.2 volts or something like that. And then uh, the GT stands for glass tube, which I think is kind of obvious. Uh, and then it's a directly heated pentode. So you'll notice that we have a plate, three grids. So this is gonna be control grid, screen grid, and then suppressor grid. Uh, but you'll notice that we don't have a separate cathode. And that's because the filament itself acts as the cathode. So on the inside of this, we should be able to see each of these five different elements. Hopefully we'll be able to clearly see the filament. I don't know, I haven't taken it apart yet, so I don't really know what to expect. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so the first thing that I can tell is that this, this big plate around the outside is actually just the plate. This is what sucks in all of the electrons, which I think is really cool. So. Uh, let's see if we can't get this plate off of there. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get this little plastic cover off. And uh, I don't really know a good way to do that other than to just uh, snip some of the stuff coming off of the top here. So we'll go ahead and try that first. All right, well, that's, that's super cool. You can, you can see some really interesting things going on here. And actually, I, I can see, uh, well, I, I can't see something, which I think is the reason that this tube was bad. I can't see the filament. And actually, I'm looking around, and I can kind of see where the filament is supposed to connect, and it just kind of moves up and then disappears. So that's, I think, what went wrong. I think the filament exploded on this. And actually, before... Uh, I took it apart. I did take this into a dark room and put uh, one and a half volts onto the filament pins to see if there was any glow, and there wasn't. So that kind of confirms my theory that the filament is what died on this. But uh, even though we can't see the filament, we can see the three grids very clearly, and especially in this uh, macro shot right here. This looks really, really cool. Uh, and so you can see that the control grid is the very tightly wound grid right in the center. And then very close to the control grid, but not quite as tightly wound, is the screen grid. And then the suppressor grid is very loosely wound, and it's much, much further away, with a lot more space between it and the other grids. And so you can see that by the time the electrons are passing the suppressor grid, the fact that the suppressor grid has a negative charge on it isn't going to stop those electrons. It's way too sparsely wound. However, whenever there's a secondary emission, there's a, enough of a winding on this suppressor grid and enough of a negative charge to prevent those electrons from being attracted to the screen grid. This is really cool. This is awesome. Man, this is a really neat looking pentode on the inside. <laughs> Now, I don't know how the 6AU6 glass is different, but man, is it dramatically different. It took me forever to get through the glass on this 6AU6 tube. It took me about 30 minutes with the file and turning it in the, the lathe here. So as I was cutting the tubes open, there's a little silver spot at the top of all these tubes, with the exception of the 1A5 GT. And this is called the, the getter. And its sole purpose is to kind of absorb any additional gases that may be uh, off-gassing off of all of the materials inside the tube to prevent contamination and the tube dying an early death. And whenever tubes start to have too many gases come off or they get a little leaky, the gitter changes colors or it'll turn kind of a milky brown. And so uh, when I pulled these tubes apart, I really wanted to see that in real time. And you can see here on this time lapse, that it, it happens just immediately. It happens so, so quickly. It's just 
really cool to see that because the gitter now is absorbing all of the impurities in the environment, the oxygen in the air and all of this stuff. It's just absorbing all of that and disappearing so rapidly. This happened in under five minutes, which I think is wild. So this is the 6AU6 Pinto. This is probably my favorite tube to build circuits with, partially because it performs really well, but also I just think that this, uh, this dark plate around the outside looks really, really cool. So let's, uh, let's see if we can trim off this top piece here and slip the plate off and take a look at the grids on the inside. We should uh, be able to see the cathode, the control grid, screen grid, and suppressor grid all wrapped around this one. So this is gonna be like that 1A5 GT, but uh, a lot more compact. So let's see if we can get into this thing. All right, well, that one came apart really easily. You can see that the, the plate around the outside here actually just, uh, just needed two quick little trims and then it slipped right off. And you can just clearly see all three grids in there. The, the manufacturing capability on this is just mind boggling. It is just phenomenal. You can see the, the cathode right in the center and then the, the, control grid is so tightly wound around it. I can't actually see it. I have to look at it through this macro picture. Unbelievable. And then the screen grid is a little looser around the control grid, but it's still pretty tight. And then we can see the very loosely wound uh, suppressor grid around the outside. What an absolute gorgeous tube. You can see I got it got a little bent coming apart, but I mean, you can still very clearly see all three grids going on here. What a beautiful, beautiful tube. So this is the 1-2 BH7. It's a uh, dual triode, uh, and you can kind of see that it's gonna be laid out just like this. And you can actually clearly see the two triode sections here. So one's on the left and one's on the right. And these little black encasings around the outside of each one are actually the plates. So that's gonna be these two pieces up here. So that's, that's very easy and very clear to see. Um, so I wanna try and get the top off and just get one of the plates off. Uh, and this thing didn't cut the smoothest. I've got a bit of a broken piece down here, but that might actually give me good access to getting the bottom plate off here. So we're gonna try that. This, uh, this may come apart violently, we'll, we'll see. So the, the plate on the outside here, these black plates are really kind of ashy. You can see they've made my, my fingers filthy just by touching them. Uh, and like on the other tubes, this material on the top and the bottom that they use to hold everything in place just comes apart terribly and makes a huge mess. And I'm not entirely sure what it is. I know that it, it has to be non-conductive because it holds everything in place. So it's probably a special type of non-conductive holder that can handle uh, both the heat and the high voltage that's expected out of these. Uh, but, oh my gosh, this thing, this thing is just absolutely gorgeous inside. Look at that, you can very clearly see the cathode, that's that metal tube in the center with the kind of white coating on it. And then you can see the grid wrapped around it. And that grid is so fine, I can barely see it with the naked eye. 
I, you know, I have these, these macro shots to, to show me what's going on, but man, without that zoom, I can barely see. I don't have, I have no idea how they were able to manufacture this 70 years ago. What an unbelievable piece of engineering. That is just super cool. Awesome. All right, next up is this uh, 2D21 Thyrotron. Now this was filled with the gas and obviously that's no longer the case, uh, but I was always really curious what the inside of this looked like because it's got this uh, really solid plate around the outside here. So we can't actually see anything that's going on inside. So uh, we should expect to see a cathode, uh, two grids, and then a plate on the outside. And I'm thinking that this piece around the outside here isn't actually the plate. I think the plate is going to be on the inside of that. Um, but there's only really one way to find out, and that is to start taking it apart. And we'll see if I can get it apart without butchering it too much. Even though it didn't come apart gracefully, it's extremely interesting. This is just absolutely wild to me. So normally, as we saw earlier, the heater is in the dead center of the tube. And then the if there's a cathode, it's wrapped around the heater. And then the grid is wrapped around that. And then the screen grid's wrapped around that. And then the plate is all the way on the outer edges of the tube. This Hyrotron is set up much more in a linear fashion. It's wild. The heater and the cathode, which is this piece here on the far left, uh, the, the heater is actually inside this kind of white colored piece. And that, that's all the way on one side. And then we have the control grid. It doesn't even look like a grid. It's just this little piece right here. And then this outer piece here is the screen grid. And the control grid slides right into the center of this screen grid and then it literally the screen grid literally is on both sides of the control grid screening it from the cathode and the plate and then the plate is quite literally just a plate on the opposite far side of the tube what a wild setup i did not expect it to look like this at all. My mind is totally blown, but it's really, really cool. It did disintegrate on the way apart, but oh, oh man, that is just, that is super neat. I am just blown away with the way that this is laid out. I did not imagine it looking like this at all. Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching me take those tubes apart. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot of really wild stuff, especially with that Thyrotron. That was really cool. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see y'all in the next episode.